So how do you create a brand that truly represents who you are and the products you sell, as well as building a business that you can scale online? That is what this podcast will help you do. My name is Henry Kaminsky Jr. and welcome to the Brand Doctor Podcast. Let me just make this statement loud and clear. Church on the hill, church on the hill. What is shaking, everybody? Welcome to another Brand Doctor Podcast episode. Today, we have a really awesome guest. I've been following this dude on Instagram for a little bit now, and his content is just super punchy, super my speed, uh, super my language, and he has really, really positioned himself as a sales expert in my opinion, and we're going to talk today about how branding and sales play together very, very nicely, and if you do it right, you can make a shit ton of money. So without further ado, I want to introduce my man, Daniel G, to the show. What is going on, my dude? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? I'm excited to do this. Thank you for having me. Dude, finally got a chance to nail you down. (laughs) We it was funny we ran each we ran we ran into each other on Clubhouse a couple right. of weeks ago yeah. and then I was like okay I see Proximix getting closer and closer and then I just reached once we were able to connect there I was able to reach out and say hey dude would love to have you on the show so I don't want to take for granted that my audience knows who you are so let's take just a couple of minutes to give them a little backstory on on how the hell you got to where you're at today because you're doing some amazing things. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, I mean, I've uh, I've always been in sales, right? Currently, you know, I I have a sales agency and I have a sales training company, so that's how my business is split. So I train and I outsource sales executives to other, you know, thought leaders like yourself that needs a sales closer. So we have a sales agency, um, and then I also obviously you know do sales training for you know different organizations, different companies, direct sales, network marketing, B two B sales, B two C sales, online coaches, entrepreneurs, a whole suite of things. Um, yeah, I mean, I've always been in sales. You know, if anybody knows my story, I've started off sales door knocking when I was 13, 14 years old, door to door sales. Um, and that translated some way, somehow I got into university. Um, and that obviously wasn't the right fit for me. Um, and I dropped out of university probably within the second or third semester. I remember a prof saying, if you want to make six figures coming out of this place and program, you're probably in the wrong place in the wrong program. Um, And I'm like, this guy is smoking something because I was well on my way probably by the age of 22, 23 to already make six figures if I just continued in the sales gig. So I dropped out of university and just got right back into sales. Um, I applied to sales jobs that I was unqualified for at the time. But, you know, my motto is go fucking wide first. You know, so I I applied to a thousand sales job and I just feel like in the process of you doing a lot, you will get lucky or because sales is sales is a timing thing as well. This is what nobody talks about, like sometimes people are in desperate measures to, to, to plug a gap or whatever the case is. It's always a timing thing. That's how, this is how fucking, I know I don't want to dive into the podcast right now, but it's not like a telemarketing company exists. These guys aren't the best salespeople in the world. The people that call you for, you know, door to, uh, duck cleaning or whatever service they are, they're not the best sales communicators in the world, but there's a reason why they exist. The reason why they exist is because they get it to timing game and they're not counting on nine out of 10 people saying yes. They're counting on one out of 750 people saying yes. So they go wide and it's a volume. And that one person that they called that said, yes, just so happened at that point, they needed their their ducks cleaned, And they were the first person to call. Not that they may have been the best communicators, the best in the game, but that household needed their ducks clean and they called them at the right time. So I just think sales is a timing thing. Personally, to me, I landed a job. I'm going to tie it back. Landed a job in medical device sales, worked that gig for a few years then branched out into training, you know, colleges, universities, high schools in sales. Cause I felt like there was a need in the marketplace for sales. Um, and then, you know, when I got knee deep into the sales training space, I then realized there was a lot of coaches, consultants, and thought leaders that needed trained sales executives. So I took all the students that I was training from my, you know, sales programs and courses, and I started outsourcing them to thought leaders. And that's how I created my sales agency. Interesting. Interesting. Did you always have an affinity for selling? Because somebody sees you and sees your online presence and is like, this guy is just, he's a natural at it. There's no way I'm ever going to be like as good as him. 
You know what I mean? I, I could hear them saying that now. But did you always have a natural affinity to sell or is that something like you kind of like was like you kind of worked into? Yeah, I mean, I uh, OK, like I think charisma and positive attitude only takes you so far. So when somebody's like, oh, that's a natural born salesperson, but the natural born salesperson doesn't mean that they're going to make a shit ton of money. Like, I feel like there is you know, a whole lot of repetition, like, you know, getting good at sales, it's a confidence game and confidence comes from repeating stuff. A lot of times it's not the first time I'm saying this message. Confidence comes from repetition, right? Repetition creates experience, experience creates more confidence and it's all a loop. So Mm -hmm. to me, I mean, yes, I think I was given some raw skills uh, to communicate with individuals, but it only took me so far. Like, you know, in the beginning, I was just okay doing, you know, one-on-one interaction with people. And I would be shitting myself if I had to sell a crowd of five people in an office. And then I had to, you know, I had to start when I got into medical sales, there's a, it's a more complex unit. And you know, you have like 18 decision makers on one product. Mm. And I was nervous in the beginning. And, you know, I had to get over the hump of just getting it out of me. And then, you know, repeating, 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 which equals confidence and um, but I also do, let me just pause for a second. I do feel like if anybody's watching, they're like, damn, this guy has a gift of the gap. Henry has a gift of the gap. They must be great at sales. I also still believe introverts are 50% of the time, just as great because they have the ability to listen and ask more powerful questions, which can solve a problem. And that's how you sell a solution is when you solve a problem. So I feel like introverts follow the script. They follow the system and they don't jump ahead. Cause sometimes guys like me and you are like, Oh yeah. And we want to jump right into it, but we're the only people that like the sound of our own voice and not the prospect. So I still sometimes feel like introverts sometimes have the upper hand. Yeah. I, I agree a thousand percent. I get coached by one every month and the guy crushes it, crushes it. And, and I, and I truly believe that he has a knack for listening. That was a learned experience for me. I'm still getting better at it. Um, I'm more, I'm, I'm sure you're a great listener as well. You wouldn't be where you are if you weren't. Um, but it's, it's a learned experience for me. It's, it's not something that comes, that comes easy. So I want to talk about your brand, how you've created it, how, how branding is integrated with selling and how selling affects branding and how that is a, a, a cyclical loop right after this quick little message. If you're a business owner who feels your branding isn't truly representing the value that you deliver, check out this free video training that will help you level up your brand's messaging and online presence so that you can start attracting higher quality clients. Visit with a Z at the end, not an S, dot net backslash level up my branding. All right. So when I first started following you on Instagram and for the, for those folks that don't know his handle, it's Daniel G. Very simple. Daniel G. Go check him out. It's, it's amazing content over there. I noticed one thing about you that stood out among a lot of people that coach selling and sales is you don't give a shit about what people perceive of you. And that comes across very, very clear. Where did that might be? And, and that follows through into how confident you come across in your selling. Where did that come from? Is that something that you, you inherited from a parent? Cause I always say my mother, God rest her soul. She had the gift of gab and her connection with people was given, was, was given to me. I mean, I, I was able to get that, but what about the, 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 the guy or gal out there that has two corporate parents that, you know, that, 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 you know, how, where did you get this, this just, I don't give a shit attitude, but, but you do truly care. Like I, I could right. see it. You wouldn't do what you do if you didn't. I think it's more of like, where did you almost give yourself the permission just to be effing you at the end of the day? Thank because you. It's, it's, it's not even like, it's, it's, it's more of just, to me, it's like this. I realize that nobody's going to buy from a fucking robot. <laughs> nobody's going to buy from robot. Everybody, the number one reason why somebody does not buy a product is because they don't trust you. So to me, it's like the more polished up I am, the more, you know, perfect I look, the less somebody will trust that person. Cause somebody's like, ah, oh, what's this guy? Like, 
the, the way I see it is this. I go tell my salespeople this. I'm like, if you wouldn't sound like that in front of your girlfriend or you wouldn't sound like that in front of your boyfriend, that tonality, the way you're speaking, don't say it to your customers because your customers are asking themselves this question. Why is this person acting like this or why do they sound like like they're so perfect and polished up where's the real them and then they're hunting everybody wants i think authenticity number one Mm -hmm. and i think number two i realized that you know in the beginning when i felt there was this role to play you know in sales and you had to be somebody you're not i realized all the people that you know i was scared about being me Mm -hmm. that i was scared about their opinions were never stroking me a check and I, I realized, I'm like, wait, wait, this doesn't make sense. The majority of people that I give a shit about what they're thinking about me will probably never write me a check in my life. Mm. Like my mother, my aunts, my uncles, my best friends are never going to stroke me a check towards the end of the month. So to me, I just, yeah, I just became independent of other people's opinions about me. And I realized the only reason why somebody else's opinion online when you're bold and authentic will matter is when you truly don't know who you are or you are not confident in your own message or that doesn't like people's opinions online only matter when you're not confident in who you are. That's huge. That's huge. Right. That's huge. You know, I have my, my thought process behind it is people are going to talk shit about you regardless. So you might as well do it anyway. Like they're going to talk good. They're yeah. going to talk bad. Like, so my, my, my thought process behind it all is like, you might as well just do it anyway, Henry, because they're going to talk either way. So true. And there's no, like Henry, there's no fucking, you, you never end up winning anyhow, because the people that talk shit, no matter what, even if you win, they will come back. Like, even if you try to prove them wrong, because sometimes to me, the worst way to go about this is trying to prove a hater wrong. Whatever, Cause haters, they will come back and they'll have a different excuse. You try to prove them wrong. The people that judge you, they'll be like, oh yeah, but you know, you got it because of your mentor. Or yeah, he got lucky because of this. No, I told you, I know you could have done that, but they always switch their excuse in the end anyhow. So then you're just constantly under, you know, their conscious control because every time you do something, they'll just end up changing their excuse, whether you want or not. So just do it for yourself. Oh man, I love it. So I'm gonna, I want to tie this, I want to tie this up very directly when it comes to branding and sales. You mentioned something before about confidence. And Mm -hmm. when people ask me like, what, you know, what's the ROI on branding? I get that a lot from, from these higher level folks that, that, that are interested in it, but not quite sure what the, like, cause I'm expensive. So they're like, if I'm going to drop this kind of money, like what's the ROI on this? Right. I say, it's confidence and clarity. That's the ROI on branding. So if you don't have that, how can you sell anything? So that's where that's why I came up with this title is is how these two branding and sales play nice together is because if you have a strong brand, which you do, mm-hmm. you'll be able to sell pretty much anything. So I wanted you to kind of speak to confidence and clarity and how that creates a very strong sales conversation. Yeah, I think it's everything. When you go look back at at a sales process, right? So it's like, you know, my business sucks. Well, okay, well, let's go look back at your business. Why does it suck? Uh, So let's go look at a customer journey. Well, Well, does it suck because you can't close out deals, but you get people on a phone call? Does it suck because... Maybe you get people on a phone call, but maybe you don't know how to present your product correctly. Does it suck that maybe when you're damning people or you're email marketing people that you can't even get people on a phone call? So is it from prospecting or maybe that it's that people don't trust you from a branding aspect. And then when you do reach out to them, they go back on your page and your page sucks. Therefore, they don't have trust in you. Ah, so really the foundation of everything, if you really think of it, it's Before you close, you got to present. Before you present, you got to get them on a phone call. Before you get them on a phone call, they're going to do a little bit of digging and a little bit of research. Mm -hmm. So really, the foundation is actually the personal branding, the marketing. I want to see who this person is before I can go invest 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes of my time with that individual, right? (laughs) Um, and, and, And branding is the only reason why I'm on this podcast and you have me on this podcast and I'm on your podcast. If I went back to your page, I'm like, okay, this guy is not active. Uh, he's not putting out anything out there. 
Fuck that. What's in it for me? Well, Daniel, that's a greedy thing. No, I'm in business. Right. What? Like I'm in business. I want to make a connection. How, how is this individual going to serve me? How is this audience going to serve me? How can I serve them? Does he even have an audience that I can serve? Right. So to me, I think, I think it's everything. And, and, and it's this, I think the answer is this Wait, wait. I know you talk about uh, confidence and clarity. I think what comes down to branding is one fucking word consistency. <clears throat> it's consistency. Nobody goes to trust the fucking restaurant that changes up their menu every, that changes up their menu every single week. Nobody trusts that restaurant. You, you would not go back to your favorite restaurant every single week if they kept constantly changing up the menu and you didn't know. You only go back to your favorite restaurants because you know they're consistent inside. If the menu changed every single freaking week, you'd be like, I'm not going back to this restaurant. And that's the way I see a personal brand or that's the way I see marketing. It's like you got to stay consistent so people trust you. Yeah. Or people are going to go to the next restaurant. You got to stay consistent and then you got to go into the quality of it. But in the beginning, you got to stay consistent. I love it. So where do you see <clears> – <throat> so you train a lot of salespeople. Like I've seen your webinar counts like 500,000 people on a webinar, right? And I've seen that in, 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 and you show that behind the scenes. Is it, is, it a, is it just come down to a confidence play with your students? They are just – once you help them build their confidence and you ooze it, so – you you sort of rub off on your students and then they they build up these chops to sell what's the what's the one big blockage that you see because you work with so many people like what's that one common thing that they all get hung up on where you're like just fucking do this and you see the huge shift in them yeah it's it's you know I think in sales, what tends to happen is people, you know, like say if you're swimming with two arms, it's people try to play on the theory like side. So they're always just like, okay, it's theoretical. So let me just listen to Daniel's calls. And then you get stuck swimming with one arm and then you go in the circle because it's just theory, it's theory, it's theory, and just keep swimming in the circle. When in sales, it's a doing game. Mm. It's a complete doing game. So it's, it's, doesn't matter how many fucking closing lines that I give somebody, you have to go out and you have to just go do it and say it and get it out and figure out what works for you. Because everything that I say and everything that you say, whether it's marketing, sales, whatever the case is, you know, it's different for everybody. So you have to figure out what resonates for you. And I think the first thing is this, when somebody realizes that they go apply something and it works or it doesn't work, but they just went to go apply it. They now have the confidence and the posture to be like, okay, what do I got to change up? What don't like nobody. I don't think, you know, a lot of people in sales work out because, they just they just don't apply and it's it's not it's not a theoretical game it's an, it's a complete applicational game like you only get confident from doing the gig and talking to a lot of people and doing it a lot of times because i think in sales you also got to get your win and sometimes the win comes with you know luck and hard work like you know like like sometimes your win will come off of talking to 290 people and 291 uh the 291 person said yes but mm-hmm. people quit 289. So I don't think people stick it out long enough because that one win can drastically change somebody's confidence inside of sales. And then there's another win behind it. If they learn how to feed off their energy and they get excited and they don't go celebrate it and they don't go spend their commission check and they harness that energy and they put it into a different conversation. I think that that's like the differentiator. People quit right before the freaking like magic or miracle happens in sales. And they're like, Oh, let me go try something else. out." Yeah. It's that, it's that story three foot from gold. Right. Right. right? It, you got to watch, you got to listen to that audio or read that book. It's called three feet from gold and we won't get into it here for time's sake, but it's a phenomenal book that I highly recommend. So let me ask you this as we, as we start to kind of round the corner and, 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 and wrap up, who do you go for inspiration for marketing, for l- learning to sharpen your craft? So when I was young, I've, pro- I've read every sales book in the game. Like you could think about it. The old sales trainers, Brian Tracy, Tom Hopkins, you know, Grant, all the guys in the space that, you know, were dominating their times. Um, and, you know, I repeated what works and I deleted what does it in my sales practice. Right. So I'm like, okay, what's relevant right now? What's working? What are customers saying? What's relevant in the 21st century? And now I think my biggest in- inspiration that I think I get inside of my sales, my business is reverse engineering this conversation that we're on right now and coming out with concept 
um, as to why this podcast was good. Literally, like human interaction is how I learn and how I create my concepts right now. And just like how we had an interaction about, you know, me being on your podcast and, you know, you bringing me onto this podcast and I would never be on your podcast if you didn't have a brand. I think that's a lesson to go teach my audience tonight on an Instagram live. So I think through human interaction is how I get inspired. But I don't go through life on automate. And I think a lot of people go like they scroll past their wins and they scroll past their losses and everybody's looking for a fucking golden nugget inside of the book. But I feel like the golden nugget is inside of the sales conversation that you fucked up on or it's inside of the sales conversation that you won on. But then you went to go celebrate way too quickly when you should have went to sleep at nighttime and you should have reverse engineered as to why you won or what you said and you shouldn't have said. And that's why I fucked up the deal. And I don't think enough people want to do that. And they're always like, what's the secret pill? What's the podcast? The podcast in the book is this, go to bed at nighttime, figure out what works, repeat, repeat what works and delete what doesn't. That's, that's the golden nugget. And that's how I feel like that's how a sales rep becomes unbeatable. That's like the self-awareness process that you can't take away from somebody. It took me years to watch myself back after I recorded something because I was like, it's already done. Why would I want to waste time and redo it again? Yeah. Worst attitude ever. Now I record everything and I'm constantly rewatching it to say, Oh shit. I didn't even realize I fucking said that. <laughs> right? So it's like, Whoa. And then you go back and you're like, oh, I wouldn't say that again. And, or I would do it differently this time. And so, you know, very, very important to, to, you know, in my opinion, if you're creators like us, like Daniel and I, like to record everything and play it back, you know, play it back and see where you can improve. Cause I can guarantee you when you go back and watch the tape, you'll see where you could have done better. And I think that's, that's growth right there. Yeah. That's such a good point. I feel like, you know, the the only time not just a salesperson but we get better as ourselves you know as coaches and trainers is i it took me it took me it's funny that you said that henry because it took me about a year and a half to two years probably speaking on stages to sit down on a plane one day and say you know what fuck it let me listen to my recording <laughs> it took me and forever I, bro and, and then i was like why why did I say that joke? And why did I continue with that joke when nobody was laughing about that joke? Okay, do not go say that joke again. And then I just realized through listening to yourself, you know, you are almost like your biggest critic. So it's like, one, you know, you got to repeat with your team and role play with the team and see what works with your audience. But two, like, fuck, you could find the mistakes yourself. We're smart as humans. We we know how people are reacting to our messages and, and things like that, right? Yes. So I just, it took me a while to go back to my sales courses and say, Oh shit, I'm deleting that. That doesn't even make sense right now. Yeah. And that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. You know? You, exactly. If the goal is to constantly improve, you know, then why not do that? I mean, it, it, it makes sense to do that. So this was awesome, dude. And I'm very respectful of time. I, I, I got one more question now that I got you in front of me. You know, what's. What's the next 365 days look like for you? Like, what are you focused on? And what's the most important part of branding for Daniel G? I think, you know, look, looking at the, the next year to two years is, you know, I have a book on the way, so I'm going to be on a whole tour doing a whole book tour. Um, I think it's getting in front of a lot more organizations and putting the right information in front of them. Um, I, I want to make sure that my, the, the brand is always very clear, um, that I run a sales agency. I always go back. Okay. Is my content aligned with the pillars of my brand? If my, if my brand is, Hey, I hire salespeople and I train salespeople. And I want to let you guys know that I do that for every single industry is my message. Very freaking clear is every put like piece of content, very clear that that's what I do. Um, and I think, you know, uh, a big takeaway for me, um, is collaboration, I think, in the next couple of years, doing what I'm doing with you um, and a lot of other people and, and lowering the ego sometimes because I feel like, you know, a lot of people in our space feel like everybody's fucking competition and that doesn't go nowhere because everybody's trying to like constantly step on each other being instead of saying this, right? I know my audience can't see me, but instead of saying, hey, let's get together and we can create absolute fire because now your audience, you know, 
knows who I am. I post you on Instagram. My audience knows who you are. So I just feel like a whole shit ton more of collaboration. That's getting me excited because I feel like I haven't, you know, I've asked myself this question. That's a good question that you asked because I asked myself that last week. I was sitting down and I was in a hotel room and I asked myself, I'm like, Daniel, how would your fucking business look if you leveraged every single one or you worked with every single one of your connections <laughs> in the next couple of years? Like if you actually, you know, start to take a look at your connections and see how you can use them and how they could use you um, in a business format, how would it look? And I said, wow, that would be, a, that would be insane. And you know, sometimes you, you might get shut down and somebody might not want to give you the helping hand, but you better not fucking ask yourself five to 10 years down the road saying, what if I just ask that person to interview me? What if I just ask that person to be on their stage? What if I just ask that person to be on my show or to write an article about them or to do an Instagram live together? Dude, so happy you brought that up. As if, the, if there's anything, I'm not so much on Clubhouse anymore just because, like what? right? It, it's too much of a time commitment. Like mm-hmm. I like Instagram where I could post and then get on with my shit. You know, and that post kind of does a lot of the work for me. You know what I mean? I can't do that with Clubhouse because you got to be there. So I've been very, very, um, I've been scaling back way much on, on Clubhouse. But I will tell you this. If there's anything that Clubhouse taught me this year was the power of collaboration. I would open up rooms by myself. 20 people show up. I'd open up rooms with three, four people. Hundreds of people showed up. So I said, okay, that's the universe telling me something. Now, how do I bring that over to Instagram? Because Instagram has been very, very good to me business-wise and, and, and growth-wise and community-wise. How do I bring that over? So I started doing – this is something that I learned from you too, by the way. I'll, I'll share this with you real quick. Instagram Lives, you could do multiple people on those now, right? So I bring three, four people on. But the best thing that I learned from you to one night was I said, look at this son of a bitch. He says, he posts, he pins the comment in the thing, share this live with seven people and he pins it. And I go, son of a bitch, what a good idea. There's a little arrow button. Yeah. So I go, that's brilliant. So every time I go live now, I, I write that little comment and pin it and it keeps people it keeps people bringing more people in and that has increased reach and engagement in the whole nine. So collaboration is huge. When you get to the point in your career, I've been in business 14 years now. I realized this year that you can impact way more people and, and level all the tides up when you work with others. Right. When you get confident enough where you could say, listen, that's not my wheelhouse. I'm going to refer you to a competitor. I think that's when you really, that may be a little too juicy for some people, but if you're able to do that at some point in your career, or maybe it'd be an indirect competitor, maybe you set it up where I do it all the time. Here, give me 10% referral fee and I have affiliate, I have affiliate commissions coming in a few grand a month because we've made those, a stat, we've made those connections and partnerships, right? So highly recommend collaboration over, over everything. And you'll see, you'll see how opportunities, listen, Daniel wouldn't be here today if I didn't reach out personally and say, right. Hey, you want to, you know, come on the show for 30 minutes and, you know, shoot the shit about what you love. <laughs> right. It would, it, yeah. it would have yeah, never yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would have never yeah. happened. Yeah, this is, you know, I like that you brought up the, even the competition factor as well. Like how you said, um, you know, refer them to a competitor because it's so fucking crazy now that you see so many people, you know, shitting on their competition, or I think the worst thing to ever do in sales with a prospect, since we're on a sales podcast and branding podcast right now, I think the worst thing to ever do is to talk to a prospect and shit on your competition. Cause all the prospect is thinking in their head is this. Why is that person so insecure about their business that they have to shit on somebody else's business? Yeah. That's all it shows. Anytime you shit on your competition with the prospect, it shows a sign of insecurity. That's it. It shows that you are not secure. You are not confident. You don't have belief in your product that you have to shit on somebody else's product to make your product look five times better. Dude, you know, it's funny. I, you say that and I think back. And I might have said this on a, on a previous show, but I'll share it again. I always pay attention to how people treat other people and what they say about other people. Because quite frankly, what makes you different than anybody else? They're going to, and this is my belief, they're going to treat you the same eventually. May not be right away. 
but they're going to treat you the same. So if they're talking shit on people, then why wouldn't they do it to you? <laughs> but, but if they're always pulling people up, they're always encouraging, they're always, you know, you could always see that they, they, they just value life and people and energy and all of that. Well, then I want to, I want to surround myself with those people. And that was something that I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be judgy right now. Okay. I, I watched you for quite some time before I reached out. And I wanted to really say, here's my selfish reasons of you being on the show. I said, I want to pull him off of his Instagram platform to really see who he is. Does, is right. he the same way offline? If you will, I consider this offline, right? Right, 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 right. Offline than he is in front of the camera, like really presenting and in, 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 in theater mode, for lack of better words, right? And the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Daniel is the same person offline as he is online. And I, my friend, have a lot of respect for that because how many people that you and I met over the years where they show up online and you think they're like, awesome and then you meet them at an event and they're the biggest pricks you ever met and you know how you know that that's common that's so funny that you said that because when i show up to events or or i'm at a starbucks or whatever the case is somebody comes up to me and they're like yo man dude you're like the same person offline that you are online and i say i'm like you know i get that a lot and and to myself i'm like there's a reason why somebody's saying that because they have met so many fucking fake individuals online <laughs> that when you see them offline they are completely freaking different their heads down they're looking at the floor they they don't have the energy that they had online right so and i think that that's such a good play to to me it's like okay how would you be offline translate that into your online presence how would you be online translate that into your offline presence and constantly keep that in check and don't overthink it so i know you have a branding you know, audience here in a marketing audience, the best way to think about it, you know, if you guys are making videos or you guys are trying to see how to brand your product, almost explain, like, for example, if I was on an Instagram story right now and I had to explain my marketing services or my business, I would almost explain it to my camera as if I was explaining it to my friend over FaceTime. So I would think my friends on FaceTime, I would be like, you know what? Let me just have a conversation about a story as to why I opened up my product. Hey, by the way, did you guys know that? Da, 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 and you just have a conversation with the camera and it becomes a lot easier. It's like, okay, my best friend's on FaceTime. Boom. Let me open up the camera, explain to them why I'm in the business, what the benefits are of my business and you know how they can get involved. And if they're interested, just let me know. And it's very nonchalant. Hey, let me know if you're interested. I got to run. I'm super busy. Have a great freaking day. That's it. Dude. Exactly. Don't like, right? it's just a frame of mind. Right, you're you're what what do they say? Like your your subconscious and 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 conscious don't know the difference between reality and not right or some, something along right. those lines. Right, I'm I'm butchering that, but if you just said to yourself, "I'm talking to my best friend that I truly want to help," it's no different than having an audience of people online. You know what I mean? It's no different. So what, just train your brain to get comfortable, I guess, in that sense where you could get in front of that camera and just give it to him straight. So man, I could go another hour easy with you, but we're going to wrap up. Uh, where can people learn more about you and get more of a taste of your brand and, and, and just your sales acumen and your skill set and expertise? Yeah, I, I think the easiest way is if they just go back to my Instagram. It's at Daniel G. So you guys can go back and you guys can, uh, you know, there's so much content on my Instagram. Uh, yeah, you know, I have courses. There's always probably a link in the bio once a month. But there's so much content on my Instagram that you guys can really just, you know, go in. If you guys are struggling with objections or struggling, you know, how to set an appointment with people, I guarantee you there's videos on my Instagram uh, that describe all of that. So it's like a masterclass for free on my Instagram. It really is guys. Uh, honestly, yeah. I mean, I, I could scroll Daniel's feed for 20 minutes because it's yeah. so it's punchy. It's to the point. It's very consistent. And I like what you said. I want to highlight this one more time before we wrap up. Notice what, what, what Danny said before about any time he goes to post, he makes sure it's aligned with the two verticals that he delivers. If it's not, don't post it. <laughs> so you, you have been very consistent in that manner where you go to Danny's page and you know exactly what he's all about. 
That's yeah, it. You know what you're getting. You know what you're getting. You know the restaurant menu. Mm-hmm. And that's you. Huge. Know the menu, but you know you're coming back to my page. You're going to get sales leadership. You're going to get an objection. You're going to get closing. You might get a little bit of branding here and there from a sales branding perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's important. And it's a good point you brought up because I feel like, you know, posting your meal 24 seven on Instagram, you got to realize that that's not building a personal brand. You can yeah. post, but you're just posting the fucking post. <laughs> What's the value does your audience get? Does your audience want to share your meal? Boom. No. So like, like, and, and okay, I get it. I post shit too. That is behind the scenes because people love it. And I do that every single day. However, it's going to be like a 90, 10, it's going to be like a 70, 30, 70% of shareable and valuable information that's consistent. And then 20, 30% behind the scenes, yeah. showing them what you're up to with family, et cetera. Cause mm-hmm. people like that as well to see behind the scenes, but mm-hmm. ask yourself this question. Do I have a lot of material on my Instagram that people could share? If not, and is it shareable related back to the brand pillars of my brand? Bingo. Bingo. That, my friends, is how branding and sales play very, very nice together. You do what we talked about today in conversation consistently over time. It will compound and you will have a beautiful following and you will have more business than you know what to do with. So, Daniel, appreciate you, man. This isn't the first time we're going to collab. I can promise you that. Uh, 100%. Thank you for having me. You're very, very welcome. Go check out Daniel G on Instagram at Daniel G and start leveling up your sales skills immediately. Guys, have an amazing day. If you haven't subscribed to this show yet, please do. And please write a review if you can. That's like my fuel. I want to know the good, the bad, the ugly. I want to make sure that this program gets better every episode. So your feedback is very, very important to me and screenshot the damn thing and tag me on, on Instagram in the stories. And I will make sure that I show some love and share it as well. Guys have an amazing day and I will catch you on the next episode real soon. Take care. Hey everyone, this is Henry Kaminsky Jr. Again, and really quick, I want to invite you to a one-on-one consult with me right now if you're looking for the clarity and focus you need to build your brand. brand. Over the past 13 years, I've served hundreds of entrepreneurs that have great products but struggled tremendously with articulating its value to their ideal customers. You didn't get in the business to just change a few lives, did you? Your ideal clients need you. And when your brand has precision crafted messaging coupled with beautifully thoughtful design that sounds, looks, and feels like you, they'll know you're the perfect match for them. If this is something you're struggling with, what I want you to do right now is pause this audio and go visit www.uniquedesigns with a Z at the end, not an S, dot net, and book your one on one console call with me. Remember, the quality of your brand will determine the quality of your clients and the quality of your clients will determine the quality of your life.